the uh, setting things up. We've got gloves for working with the uh, refrigerant, and uh, this is definitely one of my favorite sets of gauges. Is the S Man 3? It's very nice for calculating superheat and set pull. Takes all the well, takes a lot of the guesswork out of the whole thing. Now this one, I, I've got a leak somewhere, and I suspect the Schrader valves here. So probably going to be changing those out, but I wanted to. Um, this one is pretty empty. I haven't hooked up gauges yet, but just by how fast the compressor starts overheating and and uh, how little the line gets pulled, I know it's low on freon, which means we got a leak somewhere. So I'm going to locate that leak. Now I see smudges on the side here, which uh, could be uh, evidence of a leaking Schrader valve. So. Yeah, that's a very common place for it to leak. And another common spot is the evaporator coil. So we're just going to be kind of going through and checking those. I need some gas in the system in order to better check that. So here it goes. I'm going to hook up gauges and see what our standing pressure is. Making sure all my gauges are all turned off. And I'm going to be so adding some refrigerant, but uh, also I'm going to be checking what my standing pressure is. Uh, I'm going to start with just the low side only because this one, I'm not worried about calculating superheat yet until I fix my fix the leak. So, okay, so check up the low side. And here's the cap. And when I pulled the caps off earlier the other day, it was way hot out and towards the end of the day, um, I saw moisture in the caps themselves, again, which suggests that the Schrader valve is leaking. And you can see a bit of moisture in there. You can also see moisture on my finger when I wipe it and also around the sides. So. That suggests to me that we have a leaking Schrader valve. And part of the problem with this is, is in order to change it, the tubing's really in the way. The, the tool to fit in there is going to be really, really tough. Show you the Schrader core changing tool here. And so, how are you going to do that? I could take the conduit off and try to move it around. And that may be what I wind up doing here because that would be a way to be able to get in there and change that so on a tight spot. Um, I also brought a leak detector. Now, like I was saying, this one's pretty empty, so it's a good chance it might not even show up here. That's right on it, so I'm going to change the sensitivity to higher. This is a CPS leak detector, one of my favorite tools. And the field piece S-Man 3 is definitely one of my favorite tools for charging. Um, you can find links in the description to these. I'm going to go ahead and pull the top one here too on the high side. Hear it responding a little bit, but you know, nothing really. I need to get some gas in the unit first and then kind of prove it out because, like I said, it is so empty. So, let's check a look. Check a look. Let's check a look at what our standing pressure is. These are our quick release hose fittings on the ends of these. Um, pretty nice set of also, you can get these JB hoses with the quick connect fittings, which is what you want. It prevents frostbite. And these gloves work out good to prevent frostbite as well. So now we can look at our standing pressure once this goes through. And like I was saying, we are so low that we definitely should have, you know, more standing pressure than one pound, you know. And it's even showing possibly less than a pound. 
that's not good. Um, so really, I need to I need to fix the leak. I'm gonna hook up the high side also and see what we're at. Normally in this situation, I wouldn't do that, but I kind of need to know if we have any refrigerant in there, and if not, I'll probably need to pull a vacuum on this before doing anything. And get all the moisture out, and then. Yeah, we definitely, we're in negative, negative territory, so, yep, I'll grab my vacuum, pull a, pull a vacuum, and then we'll go from there, and then I'll, it's tricky, but you can't find a leak with a, with a, uh, a vacuum on it, and without, without any refrigerant, so. Okay, so we need to go back in. Um, I'm thinking that it's in my the leak is in the Schrader valves. It's possible it's also in the coil um, and uh, the um, my vacuum is sort of worn here. The, uh, it's missing a couple deals that make it level, but here's the the fill deal. So I'll just kind of level it by by hand. Still alive, still works good. I just need a couple rubber grommets, I think, on the feet. I think those are, or something on the on the back there. I can just use a rag to balance it. Where, about where it should be. That'd be good. Now we can watch for the. Oh, shoot. Spilled some. in there. We don't want it. Okay. I'm going to wipe off that excess oil on the top. Looks like I filled a little more than I wanted to. I've got the old tank here. It's not too bad. It's right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to save the old one and then when we're finished we can empty the old oil. I can just put it up on the cart here, and that'll give me good space to drain it right into the old one. So, I'll leave my rag set up here. Exactly that. Okay. And now I need my rig for tapping power up on the roof. So, my leak may be in the Schrader valves, it may be in the coil. Uh, either way, the Schrader valves I can be placed with a charge in it. The, uh, I could pump down the unit if I need to to replace the coil, fix the leak there. So that's that. Okay, that power as I showed you in a different video. That's another story. Vacuum pump, and let's see. I need to change my yellow hose now. We've got it hooked up to the high side and the low side, and this is covering the shoulder valves. The nice thing about this is as long as everything's sealed here, and we pull a vacuum, we'll be able to tell if our leak is at our coil or, or the unit or somewhere else, or at the shader valves. The shader valves now are squeezed down and sealed, and so, um, I'm going to hook up the vacuum pump. And it goes to the center port here. And we're going to pull the vacuum and see if it holds. If it holds over a good amount of time, because, you know, then that's going to mean that our leak is at our trader valves. And if not, then it's somewhere else. So 
um, and it may be in addition to somewhere else. I mean, it may be at, at more than one spot. It could be the Schrader valves and the coil, or you know, something else. But we're gonna. But if it holds, then we know it's at our Schrader valves, and it just makes everything a little bit easier. I'm gonna use a rag to level my coil, level the back of this. All right, and I'm ready to run it. And you can see our standing pressure is negative 0.8 to negative 0.9. So negative 0.85 <laughs> or negative 0.9, something like that. Okay. So here we go. We're going to fire up the vacuum. Got just a little switch on the back. And then we're going to open the low side and the high side. Now we're pulling the vacuum. Pull from both sides. And we'll be able to see steam coming out of here, which is boiling up moisture from inside the unit. And so we'll pull out any contaminants and you know, mostly the moisture. Air, air contains moisture. We don't want that to mix with the equipment, so that's why it's really important to pull a vacuum. I'm going to pull a pretty good vacuum here. You can also do it from the high side. Either way, you can go high side or the low side. This is pulling from different points in the system. And again, if we've got a leak somewhere else, and it's not going to hold the vacuum. You can see the difference now is that we're pulling from two different sides. And we're pulling from the high side. And hopefully it's just in the trader valve, so it'll be a lot easier for me. But hey, it's not about how easy it is, it is what it is. I'm just switching sides, pull from the low side. You can actually pull from both sides and open both of them. Pull straight across. Okay. And I'll see how far I can pull it down a bit. And then we'll just turn it off and leave it for 20 minutes or so and see if we actually pull. While that's going, I probably can start hooking up my other gauges here. Odd how it's taking them there. But here's our low side. Here's our high side. And it's a good idea to try to set these vertical so you get the side of the, the little sensors, get the side of the clamp to get a more accurate reading at that point. I may be getting ahead of myself because I, I got a feeling that we're going to be changing those trader valves. And I need kind of clear access. That's going to be a tricky one. I've got uh, power coming into the bottom. I may go turn off the breaker when I change this one. I might have to remove the conduit to change that, that deal. Okay, so we're pulling 27 on the vacuum, 27.1. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off there. And we're going to see how we hold. And I can turn the vacuum off. See if we hold, huh?
do believe we're holding. But it's going to take some time. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go turn off that breaker and uh, set things up. We might see a little adjustment here to reach the same vacuum. We're at 682 microns and that's bouncing back and forth a little bit. That's a good sign because if there was a hole anywhere it'd be pulling air in and the microns would eventually rise up to atmospheric pressure which is like 750,000 microns. Yeah, that's a good sign. I'm gonna go turn off the breaker like I was saying um, and uh, get this done. Okay, just peeking at the inside coil. A lot of rust on the coil, but so far, uh, no indication of a, of a leak. We'll see. Okay, so I need to turn off the breaker so that I can disconnect the conduit and change that out a lot safer. Okay, it's been about five minutes. We've gotten to 26 on the pressures, and but we're 825 on the microns. So I think we're definitely doing really good on, on microns, what we're holding in the amount of microns that we pulled. And we're holding, you know, the pressure is going to fluctuate a little bit with temperature and everything else. Um, anyway, I've got the power turned off and we'll check that again and I'll, I'll wait about 20 minutes to make sure there's no other leak. And I'm pretty sure here that we're, we're good, but um, you know. So I need to disconnect the conduit. Now the uh, capacitor still holds the charge in it after the power is disconnected. And so we need to discharge the capacitor. But just by, I'm holding only the insulated portion of the screwdriver and bridging the leads. I'm gonna do the same for the fan just for safety. Technically the fan cancels out, but that's okay. Okay, so to be able to change that Schrader valve, I need more room. And so what I'm going to do is try to take the, the, the uh, connection here off so that we can hopefully I might need to go get my channel locks or something. Stubborn one. Oh, they are sometimes. There we go. Yay. And we'll just reset that all when we're finished, but now I can move it out of the way. Alright. Buy me next case. Okay. 25.7 on the pressure, but our microns still climbing up. That's normal, as long as we're not rising up too much. I believe we're we're doing good but again I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes come back to it I wrote it down on a piece of paper what I'm at I want to conserve my battery life so I'm gonna turn it off and I'll just come back to it after so power 
powering it down and then I'll come back later and power it back on. I think we're good though. I think we have no leak. No. Pretty sure. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes now and so we're going to fire it up and see how we're doing. 25 it's looking good the microns have, have done nothing but rise up just a tiny bit which is normal i'm gonna go ahead change the shader core now really uh this one's got a vacuum on it so i don't even need to use the jb tool really i can just change them um, without it but since i went ahead and pulled the conduit and all um, Go ahead and use it, but really we could just do this uh, without it. I'll go ahead and get those out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off since it's unimportant it now at this point. And we'll just re-pull our vacuum once we change these, change these out. So it really doesn't matter. I can just, I can use the tool or I can pull them straight out. We actually, uh, we have no vacuum. So, I mean, we just have a vacuum, so it doesn't matter. We can start over fresh. So this is a little easier. As long as the Trader core actually comes out. We'll be good. And that is if sometimes this one, if they got bent or something, sometimes trader valve caps get tightened on too much and then you can't get it out because the inner portion gets yeah, it gets mushroom and sometimes the pressure actually helps that so we don't have any pressure on this Okay. Oh shoot, the inner portion is still inside. That sucks. And it's got a vacuum on it, it's pulling a, the uh, vacuum. It's like sucking my finger in. I'm going to need to see if I can hopefully remove the inner portion. Ah shoot. That's no fun. I'm putting a cap on it for now. I'd rather hold pressure than pulling a bunch of moisture in. We'll boil it off when we're done anyway. So moving on to this, this one. That low side. There we go. And here's our new one. And that went good. And I've got a little nylog. Nylog is great for this. Gonna add that to the O-ring. Okay. And I'll reinsert the wheel. Kind of finger tighten. You don't need to over tighten these, just finger tighten is good. Alright. So the low side that went good. High side not so much. What we need to do is extract that uh, deal and I've got a 
a special extraction tool to do that. Just have to find it, that's all. So that's the next order of business. Just finding that tool. Okay, got lucky on my extraction kit. It's always a good thing when you can find what you're looking for. And uh, this one I'm just using the, the smallest size here and we're just going to twist it in to twist it out it's reverse threaded so it basically tightens as we twist it in to pull it out okay and it won't budge yet so i'm going to use my tool here to just kind of turn it and hopefully and now we'll twist it right out and yay we have extracted our deal and I might have to get that off later because I need another tool to hold it it's really tightened in there pretty good and yeah that went great it's always a good thing so now I get a nice new Schrader core and we'll put some nylog on there on the o-ring Yep, and this just confirms, you know, what was going on, that we were losing the refrigerant. Also, you can see the kind of the marking on the sidewall, but that's where we were, that's where we lost our charge from, so. Yay, we're in. Now I can re-pull a vacuum and uh, get this thing on the road. <laughs> All right, get it charged up and do everything how we want to this one. Okay, so we have no refrigerant in, so I won't really need my gloves yet. I'm just going to be re pulling our vacuum. And the vacuum, I kind of need to go inside and get measurements. Um, I guess I'll do it after. Yeah, that's what it is. Pull a vacuum, we'll re verify for a bit that we're holding. Go ahead and turn it on. So obviously, now we've probably don't have a vacuum anymore. But yay. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and I'll uh, fire up the vacuum and we'll pull that vacuum. Uh oh, gotta go inside and turn the breaker back on because we turned off power to separate this conduit. Um, so before I do anything, I'll go ahead and reset that conduit and uh, that'll work out good. Right. So, let's see right here. Push that through. just keeps the wires from rubbing against the sharp metal sheet metal of the box so it's great nice and tight there we're all set there okay I'll go turn the breaker back on and then we'll pull that back in okay breakers back on all right breakers back on turn the vacuum on and I'll open the line Start pulling again. So in the situation running a vacuum, you just no need to purge. Purging is only done when you are adding refrigerant. Uh, when we hook up our refrigerant gauge, we'll only purge the yellow line 
in this instance, in this application, because we will have pulled the vacuum from everywhere else, and we don't want to let air into that vacuum. So it's a little bit different situation when you're, you know, pull, pull the vacuum and then charging. Okay, so we're pull, pulling our vacuum on down. Go ahead and open the high side as well. Gonna boil off all that moisture inside, all that air that went in there contains moisture, so we're gonna get rid of all that moisture. Worst thing for an air conditioner, well, one of the worst things for an air conditioner is to get air in the line as that air will mix with the refrigerant and then turn into an acid and corrode the system from the inside out. So we don't want that. Hence we're pulling a good vacuum for a good amount of time. And this we're also verifying that it's holding our holding the vacuum. So those two things. You can see our microns starting to show up as we're pulling this vacuum here. Definitely my suspicion was that the Schrader valve had come apart and uh, because of that situation sometimes they're difficult to extract so maybe it's a it's a good thing everything leaked out it let me get straight access to it. It might have been much more difficult to pull out with this and I wouldn't even have been able to extract it. But yeah, we're pulling microns now. We'll go ahead and turn it off. Turn off our high side. Turn off the low side. Okay, and verify we hold. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And so we're at 27.8 and we've got 1800 microns. So it seems our vacuum's holding, but now we need to vacuum it down to at least 500 microns. That'll work. All right. Okay, we're still adjusting for the pressures and everything to kind of settle. So this is gonna take a little time as everything's off. You can see here it's listing us as stable, so that's good. It's a very cool tool, the Field Piece S-Man 3. I really like it. Very, very nice. Definitely makes life a lot easier for me. So you can see we're sitting at 1620. We've started to bounce back now, so it's just going to kind of, you know, bounce back and forth a little bit but that's okay as long as we're holding so i'm going to go ahead and turn it off and i'm going to come back we're at 27.5 and for standing pressure and the 1620 micron okay it's been about an hour now so I'm gonna test, test it out here and see where we're at this one was low enough that replacing the filter drawer would have been a good idea. I didn't do it because I didn't work in the plumbing on this one. 24.7? Yeah, so that happens sometimes with uh, temperature change because there's a pressure and temperature relationship. So as long as you're holding microns, good. Stable? I really like these gauges as, as they actually give you a stable indicator on the screen. Looks like the numbers changed, but it really looks like we're holding there. Yep, stable. We're holding the vacuum. We're looking good. So you first want to prove if there's a leak or not, and then you don't want to pull a further vacuum because if there was a leak, you'd be drawing moisture into the system. But once you prove that the vacuum holds, then you want to vacuum to your 500 microns. After that, you may see the system rise up a little bit when you turn the pump off, but as long as it doesn't go way high, like to over 500,000 microns, then you're good. I'm going to call that good. And when I add Freon, I'm going to charge it up and then uh, come back to it after. So now with hooking up our gauges, we are just going to hook up our can of refrigerant. We're going to detach it from the micro from the vacuum. Switch it to the refrigerant can. And then we're not going to purge from the high or the low side. We are only going to purge from the center port. Because up to 
up to this point and up to this point. Up to here and up to here is all vacuum in the hoses. And so, open my refrigerant can and I'm gonna purge the line. Put some disposable gloves on to prevent frostbite. At least just on the operating hand. And before we add any of our refrigerant, first we're going to purge. So again, we're just purging this hose line. That was a little more than necessary, but definitely getting purged there. Uh-oh. Why did my deal turn off? A little too cold. That was weird. Okay. Frosty! That scared me a little there. Okay. So now I'm going to charge it up here. Here we go. It's going to be nice and thirsty. And charge it and then I'll turn it off and see how we go here. Okay, we're doing good. We're holding. I've got a new can of refrigerant, so that's going to make charging this one up much, much easier. I need to go down inside and turn off the power and uh, disconnect our vacuum hose. Okay, so by turning the breaker off here, we can safely disconnect the lines and then we can come back down and turn off, turn the power back on to restore power so we can charge the system. Okay, so now we're ready to disconnect here. There we go. Now we can go back inside and turn the power back on. Be ready to charge the unit. Okay, so now we're ready to charge it up. Go ahead and start adding the Freon. Now wait until it just about stops. And then I'll go ahead and energize the unit. I'm not waiting until it stops actually, I'm just going to go ahead and energize the unit and then we'll see where we're at. Alright, it's a great sound. We're at about 21 superheat. Eighty two indoor. Virtual saturation is eighty nine, so we're going to bring that down closer to forty. Mine's not cold yet. Good, turn it off and then we'll see where we're at. Sixteen PSI, so we're we're still pretty low. So we definitely need more juice. I'm 
glad to have uh, dialed this out. This one's giving me a few rounds of trouble. Take a look where we're at now. So we're climbing on our virtual saturation temperature and PSI is about 30. Now we want to be closer to 65, 69, somewhere in that range, just as a you know, ballpark. But after a little while, I'll detach I'll take my indoor wet bulb, outdoor dry bulb, and then we'll calculate superheat now that we've verified that our leak is fixed. And I might charge it to a good spot and then take lunch, come back and verify it's still at that same spot, and then detach my hoses and just prove out that I've actually got the leak fixed. We've got a nice day here. It's good to get after this on a day like today. Give a little shot of scenery. It's just a uh, nice, beautiful Palm Springs day. Saturation temperature is getting there. PSI is getting there too. Right. I like to see the virtual saturation temperature around 40 degrees. That's uh, corresponding to the temperature of the coil. So, you know, water freezes 32 degrees. It exists as ice water at 32 degrees. At 32 degrees. So we want to be a little bit about freezing with the breeze to get temperature. As we start to get close to where we want to be, the suction side line will be cool. This is your suction side line, the liquid side line. Here we've got some valve uh, service valves and these you can actually use to pump down the system. These caps come off and you could actually pump all the refrigerant into the into the compressor and then that way you can isolate the the other side, this side of the, the evaporator coil. You know, if I, if I did have a leak in the evaporator coil, I could pump down the system, pump all the refrigerant into the compressor, close off the service valves. It, it's a little bit more complex than that. I, show you guys that sometimes but uh, just just for the sake of explanation you then close off the service valves and then you can work on that side you want to replace the filter dryer anytime you open the system anytime you open the plumbing uh, and uh, anyway let's see where we're at now you can hear our compressor is not quite as thirsty as it was it's still thirsty but not, not as much. It's starting to slow down a, a little bit on how much refrigerant it's drawing in. That's a nice tool. Uh, when you use it, you want to make sure that the connection is tight here. This actually loosens to be able to be replaced. I had one time where I was on a wild hunt for a leak and this kept going off and it was because the current, current thing was loose. So I wasted a couple of hours I think on that one. Uh, and the whole time it was just that. So 
a little experience as a brutal teacher, but it does it makes you learn so you actually remember sometimes, hopefully. Soap bubbles still to try and chew, and the soap bubbles still work. I put a little dish soap and a bottle of water, poke a hole in it. Still, still a valid way, but nice to have tools like this. They make diagnostic a little bit easier. And I'm just telling you, this is my favorite cage set at the moment. It's reasonably priced for these compared to some of the, the iConnects and the other other more complicated stuff. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but they're good systems too. They each have their advantages, but I'm very happy with the performance of this and how it calculates super heat, how it showed the vacuum was stable. Uh, it was all nice features and it works with a ton of different refrigerants. Again, the link is in the description to same with the, the leak detector. So virtual saturation is getting there. We're at 27.4. Yeah, I'm glad to work this one out. I really like working out, locating the leaks and fixing the leaks. You know, it just means you're not going to have to come back. And especially these days with the price of R22 has gotten insane. The last year it was 650 bucks for a jack. So it's getting to the point where you know, people are just replacing units now or converting 407C or you know, other conversions. R410A is the, mostly the go to now for, uh, for places in California businesses. And, uh, because it's a 14 year rated, and that's what's required now. Very good readings with my because then on my clamps on dawned on me. So I think at this point I'm gonna pull off, I'm gonna get my indoor wet bolt and then uh, get my indoor dry bolt. We'll see where we're at. Yeah, we're getting much closer. You see our PSI is 62.4 and our virtual saturation is at 35. Might give it a little more just to make sure my coil doesn't freeze up. And again, at 32 degrees, water freezes, so... Still want it to freeze on me while I'm grabbing temperatures. Take a little water, for it to stay hydrated. Extracted that uh, trader valve 
out for. It's a good feeling. This is the season to work these things out before it gets any hotter. Okay. Getting really good. Probably not far off from our superheat to see where we're at on our superheat right now is 29 degrees you know we're probably very close to where we want to be feeling the suction line is nice and cold so we're probably very very close uh, but nothing wrong with measuring it out and that's the beauty of this deal so I'm just going to disconnect T1 and T2 because we're going to need those to take our reading Disconnect the hoses, turn off the refrigerant can. And this gives us the chance to verify we have no leaks on our new Schrader valves. caps for them when we're finished. The caps kind of keep dirt from getting in there. They don't really keep the refrigerant in. But it's better to use them. Okay. So since I have my leak detector here, take a peek here. Right on it, we're good. Sensitivity is at the minimum. Got no leak. And on the other one, on the high side, no leak. So that's a beautiful thing. It's all right. So we have worked out those leaks, verified, proven that that's worked out. Now we're going to go inside and get our virtual, not our virtual, we're going to get our real wet, indoor wet hole. Okay. Here's my sock, I'm just going to get it wet. Okay. I'm going to let that adjust a little to the room temperature here at the return. We're going to put this to the return. Okay, so there's what our measurements were before. And so now we're going to enter in our indoor wet bulb though. 
So I'm scrolling over to indoor wet bulb right here and we're going to hit enter. And that's going to tell us what we are there. 70, almost 71. Looking at the thermostat up here, we're at 77 inside the unit. So, but it's a little different because it's, you know, the wet bulb. So, see, it's adjusting for it. So we'll let it run for a little bit. And then we'll hit enter and enter in the, the measurement once we've got it. And then we'll hook up the outdoor dry bulb. And we'll do that. Now the outdoor dry bulb will take somewhere in the shade, up on the roof preferably since this unit's on the roof, somewhere near where the unit is, but in the shade. It looks like we're coming around now where we're bouncing back the other way. So that's about right, right there. So I'll hit enter. Okay, now I can disconnect that one. And now we need our outdoor dry bulb. So this goes back in the bag. And go outside and get the outdoor bulb. Okay, while we're inside, I figured I'd just get a little bit on the leak detector. Just to make sure we don't pick up anything. It's on its most sensitive setting when I've got no leaks. So I'm happy with that. Alright. Yeah, according to our gauges we had no leaks, so tells us our target superheat for R22 is 22.9. So we'll go over and we'll see where we're at. And I'll rehook up my gauges. And we can kind of, we're offline, see so we can't measure the 22.9 at this point. So I need to hook up my gauges for the high side and our low side. Here goes the high side. And I want to re-purge everything now that I'm re-hooking everything back up. Right there. Should be able to scroll over and see our superheat, 16.9, and our PSI is 59.3. So we've got a target superheat of 22.9, showing right at 17. So I'll take my 
refrigerant again, run it to my can, and we're going to need to repurge. This time we no longer have a vacuum, so we'll want to purge from all three sides. This is normal purging for charging, so got my can hooked up, open the can. Target, our superheat is about 14 and we're going to see what happens if we add refrigerant are we going to go up or are we going to go down just feeling the, the suction side line is nice and cold we may actually be already charged enough we're going to add a little and see what happens And that's actually lowering us down. I gotta let it balance actually to, to really know. Yeah, it's actually that's lowering us down. So I don't really want to lower us down. So we're pretty close to our target superheat. Gonna call that good. It's it's slightly overcharged actually. Um, maybe you know the, the superheat's one thing. The PSI is another. So my PSI looks a little low, but my superheat looks a little high. We're sitting at 13.5. The other thing I probably should have done is change the air filter, um, but I did recently, kind of recently change them. But, you know, just for interest, uh, I'm going to go down and change the air filter now, and we'll see if that makes any difference on, on our reading here. That'd be kind of interesting. Okay, yeah, so we're going to change out the air filter here. It's starting to feel really good in here. should have done this first, but I didn't. Yeah, it looks bad enough. It's time. So what'll be interesting is to see if there's any difference on the roof. has like a little mailbox latch latches it in place get there let's go see what happens okay really didn't affect it too much the filter really wasn't that dirty um, I had changed it kind of recently you see we're jumping around 14 so um, we're not too far from our superheat I'm not gonna bother to uh, you know, I could recover for aiming for the superheat, but it's pretty close. And uh, this is a capillary tube system, so it's a very nice system in that I should have showed you inside the capillary tubes, but you can probably see it. Uh, it, uh, you know, it meters just the, the, the only amount that it lets through the capillary tubes at a time. So we're at 15. We're looking pretty good here. Maybe that filter did affect it a little bit because it's jumping up a little. Yeah, 
Yep, I can put a few things together on the box over there. We're all done. I'll start packing my stuff up here. And, uh, normally I'd recover the refrigerant from the high side into the unit. I have another unit to charge though, and so I'm not going to recover it because we're already, you know, we're already, it'll affect our superheat even, even more, but it's the wrong way. So I don't want to do that. Might as well use the refrigerant for the next job. Yeah, that'll do that. Like that up there. Put our cover back on up here. coming back on the superheat 15 degrees so it's fluctuating a little bit in there but that that's good enough to me close enough Dabbler too, a little more forgiving TXV would be forgiving too and that they adjust a bit for you know to meter the device in so, but I like the capillary, capillary tube system it's a nice system and uh, it, it doesn't fail a whole lot so that's Another part of what I liked about it. My trusty extractor kit came in handy this round. I've got a couple new valves here. So we're going to use new valve caps on our service deal. Again, normally I'd recover the refrigerant that's in the high side, but not this time because of what's happened here. Because of the way it is. So we're looking good. caps back on. You don't want to over tighten these, just hand tighten is good. They can mushroom out the deal and that's where you get a hard time getting the shader valve out. So. The line's nice and cold. Looking good. Next time I'll stop off a little bit sooner and uh, check my measurements and everything before going so far. Now, hopefully, improve and improve and improve. Always learning more, always adding to what you know, um, adding to your knowledge and understanding, and uh, learning better for the next time. Um, I'm just really happy that the leak is fixed. Uh, this one dogged me a few times before, so glad to have worked it out. And it's, you know, getting ahead of ahead of the summer. So turn off my deal here, and the rest is just packing everything out. But thanks for watching, Kung Fu Maintenance. Over and out. Perfect time, and the unit just reached temperature, <laughs> so and it turned off by itself. That yeah, it was perfect contactor pulled out man it would have been a little more perfect if the camera had been rolling when when that happened but that's okay it's a done deal thanks for watching country maintenance over now hope you liked it